Plaza de Toros de las Ventas or Las Ventas Bullring is a famous bullring here in Madrid. It's located at the district of Salamanca. This bullring was built in 1929. It replaced the former arena because the old one was not big enough. If you didn't know, bullfighting here has been a long tradition in Spain, dating back to its origin in 711 AD. Today, bullfights here at the arena starts in March and ends in October. They fight every Sunday or holidays and every day during the San Isidro Fiesta. They normally start the event at 6 or 7 p.m. and it lasts for about three hours. That was the longest walk from our hotel. And tonight we're hoping we're gonna watch a bullfight. It's gonna be my first time to see a bullfight. It's gonna be at seven o'clock at night, so I don't know what we're gonna do right now. It's only like five. But we're gonna go in and get us a ticket. Look at this guy. Right here. The Matador. Get a ticket. Okay, I went to the wrong area. The tickets is actually right here. That one's for the tour. Let's do it. All right. So I guess um, I'm so sad right now. We got a ticket for um, just a tour now because the last bullfight was last week. They of course they killed the bull. That's what I want to see. I want to see a dead bull. <laughs> But unfortunately, we're just gonna have to take a tour and just check out the place. And we walked all the way here. I know. It's kind of hard because um, you don't know when it's gonna happen. They said normally every Sunday it's gonna happen, but since it's October, it gets cold. So all the bullfighters, they don't, um, what do you call that, like fight. And I think they're all gonna go to South America I have no choice but to just um, take a tour. So it closes at 6? What the f is going on here? Is it like what time is it? So we have an hour to take a tour. By the way, the, um, the tickets are about $11 each. Euros. Euros, sorry. Man, I'm so disappointed. So. Alright, let's check out the arena. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Man, this would have been fun to watch. You know? We're supposed to be fighting today. I'm gonna go there too, down there. But um, check out the, sh the chairs here, the seats. It's kind of weird. They have numbers. Maybe you're, you're just gonna sit right here. And the weird part is that there's a drainage. Just sitting right here, imagining the bull fight right now. Bull getting killed right in the middle right there. You wanna go down? I think this is where the bull comes in. Let's see. I'm gonna go to the arena now. Let's check this out. Wow. And a lot of bulls probably died here. You know? Kind of sad. I wish you. Our plan really today was to watch the bullfight, and I was really looking forward for the bullfight because we. I purposely because it's always on Sundays and it's Sunday today, so I purposely did it that way. Um, I planned it that way, I should say. But um, the last fight was last week, and um, all we can do is just tour this place. Oh. 
it's hard. I thought it would be like more like the beach. And it kind of echoes when you talk. Can you hear me from over there? You know, I just read that a few famous bands performed here before. The Beatles in 1965, ACDC in 1996, Radiohead in 2003, and Coldplay in 2011. They even converted this into a tennis court in 2008. This must be fun. See? Look. There's like um, like a box there, like uh, for, probably for like rich people or something. Where this should die right here, you know. Here. But I don't know. I guess that's it for the tour here. Let me go out that way. So sad. So sad. It wasn't really much of a tour. That was pretty much it. Well, aside from the gift shop on our way out and this. The chapel where they um pray before they fight. And then after they pray, they go straight to the Colosseum. That was so disappointing. What can you do? Now we're just gonna go back to close to our hotel and probably find a dinner. Okay, now we're gonna go to the metro and head back where our hotel is located at which is actually actually the prime spot to be honest okay see sí. <laughs> I'm short huh? Got 190 left. 450. 70. There you go. One more. One dollar. Oh. There you go. Hell yeah. What? Oh. Yeah, it should work. Try it again. Permiso. The, we, we put our coin in, it's stuck. Do you see it? It's stuck. <laughs> well, one, <laughs> one euro. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's, it's a card. Do we get, do we, do we get two cards? I think just one. We have charged two tickets. Really? Huh. What's the ticket? It's a card. That's so weird. Well, we only got one card. Let's see how this turns out, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go that way. Mm. We go... Push the card? Oh, see. Sí. Oh, yeah. Gracias. I guess you use it twice. <laughs> yeah. It's very different how they do it here. See, man, it's kind of, it's always a little bit small, but it's not a lot of people. Right? Looking for the station to Seoul because that's where our hotel is located. And I hope this is the right spot. I think we just missed the train. Yeah. Let's go to the stairs.
I was really disappointed not seeing a bullfight. What made it worse is that the guy who sold us our tickets said that the last fight happened just last Sunday. Anyway, coming from the bullring, we're back here at the Puerta del Sol where we started this morning to find a place to have dinner. Sol. This is gonna be intense. There's gonna be a lot of people here. There it is. Go this way. Yeah. Like I mentioned before, finding a place to eat here in Madrid is not a problem at all. It's deciding where and what to eat is the difficult part. Because there's so much restaurant to choose from. And luckily for us, we found one we both liked right away. This one. I don't know what it is, but we were drawn to this place somehow. Maybe because of its simple and warm atmosphere or the fact that there are no customers at all. Well, I guess it's still early to have dinner because I was told that people here in Spain eat dinner between 8 to 9 p.m. After scanning the menu, we decided to get the noodles with squid and shrimp simply because our waiter recommended it and it was good for two people. Along with it, we decided to get a bottle of their house wine. So this is their house wine. It's a red wine which I realized didn't match the dish we just ordered. But since it's their local wine, the price wasn't that bad. It was about $10. If you're wondering what it tastes like, the wine was sweet and not bitter at all. You know, I've noticed that most restaurants here almost always serve a basket of bread, which I thought was complimentary until I found out that they actually charge $2 for it. So if you're in the habit of asking for more bread, just remember if you're here in Spain, they would probably charge you for it. As our waiter explained this dish, I wasn't expecting it to be black. I was expecting something more like yellow or orange. Well, it's black because of the squid ink. And since we already had a squid ink paella this afternoon, I wanted something different. But it's okay. I like food with squid ink anyway. And also I get to compare this from the black paella we had earlier. But one thing's for sure, this is definitely going to be good with the bread. I'm not just saying this, but this dish smelled so good. And what's really amazing is how thick and how intense the color is. I've never seen it this black before. Right here she asked me if I wanted some lemon. And of course I said yes. I just love lemon with seafood. Well looking at this, you can see that the noodles are really thin and cut short. Although you can't see it that clear, it has chunks of whole squid and shrimp. It looks really good. I was actually regretting ordering this at first. But not anymore, I just got really excited about this. So before I took my first bite, I had to sprinkle some lemon on it. Just digging my fork into this, you can see the steam coming out. And the smell it gave out is something I still remember to this day. It really smelled that good. How do I explain this? First of all, the texture was creamy and the noodles were cooked perfectly. Going by the thickness of the squid ink, you would think that the squid flavor is going to be intense, but it's not. The ink doesn't really taste like squid, it kind of has its own unique flavor. And added with the squid, shrimp, and the lemon completes the whole thing. You know, the only problem I see with this dish are the black stains that stays on your teeth. This is just olive oil I'm putting on the side for my bread, which I think is a great combination with the noodles. I don't know why, but it seems like the bread creates this balance between all the flavors on this plate. I really like the bread. It was crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. Oh, and I was right, the bread works really well with this dish. Right here I'm talking about how full of shrimp and squid this dish had. They didn't hold back on it. This dish was really amazing and you can really tell that the ingredients are fresh. It's savory, creamy, and I guess different. 
I'm not used to having this with rice, although I had squid ink with spaghetti before, which I have to admit I still think about from time to time. But the noodles here also works well. You know, if you love eating seafood, you should definitely try this. I promise you won't regret it. This dish is actually called fideos negros, meaning black noodles. It originated from the area of Valencia and Catalonia in Spain. It's basically like paella, but instead of rice, they replaced it with noodles. If you're wondering, the sauce is really not made entirely of squid ink. It's actually a broth made with seafood, including cuttlefish and squid, and the ink is just added for color. After eating the black noodles, we decided to order another dish. Now this one is a must if you're in Spain. It's called gambas al ajillo, or garlic shrimp. This dish is very popular here in Spain and very simple. It's made up of shrimp, garlic, olive oil, and some spices like parsley and chili peppers. Then it's all cooked in a clay pot until it reaches boiling point. Gambas al ajillo is commonly seen here in tapas bars, served as an appetizer, but most restaurants now serve this dish as an entree or a main course. Like the black noodles, I'm eating this with bread. Just thinking of the flavor of the olive oil and the spices in it, it's enough to pair it with bread. So the first thing that hit me as I took my first bite was that it was really hot. I mean physically hot, it actually burned my tongue. But the shrimp along with the olive oil was really good. So instinctively, I had to dip my bread in the oil. I don't have to explain how good that tasted because this restaurant is mostly known for this dish. But for about $20, I think the dish is not enough. You'll have to savor every shrimp in this pot for that price. I also wanted to mention that the flavor is not garlicky at all. I mean you would think that it is because of all the little chunks of garlic in the oil. The flavor was really well balanced. I mean you can taste the garlic but it's not overwhelming the flavor of the shrimp. Anyway, we were enjoying our meal so much, we ordered another bottle of wine. And this time, we got their house white wine. I know, we should have had this wine in the beginning because it pairs well with seafood and pasta. But it's not too late, we still had some shrimp to finish off here. So the reason why I believe white wine works well with seafood is because this wine is tangy or a little sour. It's like putting lemon on your seafood. I'm not sure what kind of white wine this is, but I would say it's very close to Pinot Grigio. Well, at this point, we just wanted to enjoy this wine and what's left of our gambas al ajillo until suddenly I had an urge to get another dish. After scanning the menu and talking to our waiter about what to order next, I remember as I was a bit tipsy from the wine, I wanted to order the grilled giant shrimp, but as I was talking to our waiter, I made a big mistake on asking about the popcorn prawn bruschetta you see just above the grilled giant shrimp on the menu. So while the waiter was describing the bruschetta, Somehow I totally forgot about the grilled shrimp and ordered the bruschetta instead, which you'll see in a minute was a big mistake. So that orange thing you're looking at is the sauce and right behind it is the popcorn prawn bruschetta. You know I always tell people you can fry a shoe and I would still eat it, but somehow this doesn't look appealing at all. Well at this moment I just remembered I wanted the grilled giant shrimp and not this. I don't know what kind of sauce this is, but I decided that I'm going to try it anyway with the bruschetta. But before I do that, I noticed just by looking at this, it's definitely not prawns. It's most likely a regular shrimp because it's small. And as far as I know, prawns are bigger and fatter than this. So right away, the bruschetta had a bitter taste to it. I wasn't sure if it's the sauce or the shrimp, but I was expecting it to be sweet. Anyway, as I was telling her about the flavor, she said to try it without the sauce. Sure enough, it's the shrimp that's bitter. You know, actually it's the breading that's bitter. The taste is like when you over fry something, or it could be the oil they fried it in, it's old. The sauce tasted like tomatoes, so the bitter flavor is definitely from the shrimp. So this bruschetta is about $10, and having only 6 sticks of these is really not worth it. The taste was really bad, even with the sauce. Even though I was a little disappointed with the popcorn shrimp bruschetta, 
Overall, the food here was awesome. This garlic shrimp was just amazing. I could probably finish two pots of this, if only it didn't cost $20. But the black noodles was the highlight for me. I really, really liked it. After our meal, we wanted to get some kind of dessert, and I asked our waiter if he could recommend us a place to buy ice cream. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think they serve desserts here at this restaurant, because our waiter would have recommended something from the menu if they did. Anyway, he told us about this ice cream shop just outside the restaurant that serves good ice cream. Do I look tipsy? No, I'm really tipsy right now. <laughs> but I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of Madrid. And I don't know where we are right now. If I didn't look at my GPS, I wouldn't know where I am. But right in front of me is some ice cream. Of course chocolate for you, right? Yeah. How did you know? Because you like chocolate. Like chocolate. Um, you your wallet, right? Yes. I don't know what I want. I'm gonna go safe. I'm gonna go with vanilla right there. The lactose free vanilla? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? No. I'm gonna go with uh, pistachio? pistachio. That's what I'm gonna go Do with. You want a cone or no cone? Cone, yeah. I'm gonna might as well go with a cone. Or two scoops. I don't normally go with a cone because it's kind of dirty and shit because my hands are dirty. But I'm gonna go with a cone. Two scoops for me. Yeah? Okay, yeah. What are you gonna get? Um, I'm not gonna get the chocolate because it's dark chocolate. So what are you gonna so get? I'm gonna get the strawberry cheesecake. I have no idea why she ordered a cup for me. Because I was pretty clear I wanted a cone. And then um, a strawberry cheesecake with the cone. That's not fair. Why? Because you get a cone. Alright. Oh shit. Oh shit. oh shit. So this is the part when I know I've drank too much alcohol. I pretty much don't care about anything. And in this case, basic hygiene. Did it, did it hit my did it hit my no, no, no. shoe? I think it hit my shoe. It did. did it hit your shoe? I think so. Okay, All just right. eat the pistachio. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take out the tip top part. <laughs> I had the pistachio and the vanilla mm -hmm. and she had what is this strawberry strawberry cheesecake cheesecake mm -hmm. all right <laughs> what kind of uh, ice cream is this I don't know if it's gelato or whatever but it's good Especially when you're like tipsy like we are. We pretty much eat anything off of the ground right now. <laughs> mm. Oh man. Mm. That's pretty good. Oh man. That is really good. This is actually good. So that's our night. And um, we're gonna go back to the hotel. Let's see what we're gonna do tomorrow. I'm gonna work on what we're gonna do tomorrow.